Let's read. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we are, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord and are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. Somebody say thank you Jesus. You may be seated for a moment. Now note that we are changed. Now some people wonder now you're going to keep looking this way in glory. I'm going to look better than this way. Because everything changes in glory. And I'm so grateful that when we get to glory, we're going to celebrate a while. But right now, before we get there, we're going to celebrate right here. Amen. 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 I've been in the Detroit Police Chaplaincy, and I've seen some things that I never thought I would ever see. And I love the officers because we get a chance to pray for them from every station. And we have another graduation this Saturday for some more young what they call volunteers that come on board as chaplains. But when you're called to go into the hospital and see little babies that was shot, no more than three and four months old, laying on a gurney, and you get up in there and you see that baby laying there, just as still like the baby just had a bottle and was resting, you'd be saying to God, now what in the world happened here? And then you see his older brother in the next hospital, he was in the receiving. The other one was in children's. And you begin to say, now, God, what happened here? People are angry everywhere. Yes, and when you deal with angry people, you deal with people that need change. And sometimes you find yourself getting off getting angry because some of us all, you know, we have our moments. I don't know about you. I, don't, I ain't been saved 24 hours a day all day. There's some days I go through changes. Amen. And I often wonder, well, why do I do that? He said, that's the old nature. That's the old you. But there's a new you coming on strong because the moment you check that old you, the new you pops out. I ain't talking to anybody, but I'm talking to everybody because every one of us are going through some type of changes. And if you don't be careful, people can send you through changes. Somebody know the right button to push. Now, here you is driving your new car. And here comes somebody acting crazy and just cut you off. And then they get back and they put their finger up. You say, what you say? <laughs> just get out the car. <laughs> Amen. We're going to handle this. And then you realize that you shouldn't be talking like that. What is wrong with you? Just say, thank you. That's what you want to say in the spirit. But in the flesh, you want to say, uh-uh. So you see, it's two sides to you. The repetitiousness of your flesh is in a rush to get in trouble. Yeah. But the spirit that's in you is a rush to yield to God. Yeah. Now, I'm fulfilling something here because all this way, this life journey, coming up the road towards the kingdom of God, I've had my moments. Mm -hmm. And every one of us have had some moments. And I mean, people look at you crazy. You're supposed to be Bishop Tate. And you did it right in front of some people you know were saved. <laughs> and they looked at you and said, hmm. Y'all don't get that, do you? Y'all don't have that problem. But there's times when you have to check yourself. Amen. The Bible tells us that we give ourselves to the Lord and we put ourselves on the altar as a living sacrifice. And we say, God, we want you to take this sacrifice that we give. Now, we come with a bunch of broken pieces because we have made you a bunch of promises that are broken. And we want you to deliver us and at the same time heal us. Now, being a pastor all these years and come out to be, here you come to the bishop. And next thing you know, you get an apostleship. Next thing you know, you get a doctor's. Next thing you get all that stuff. And you be saying, that don't mean nothing. Guess what? I'm a servant. Amen. And when you come to serve, don't, don't you come at me by the title. Because right. I don't want to hear nothing about the title. I'm a servant. Yeah. And when you come to serve, you come to serve the living God. You say, Father, not mine, but thine. I need you in the inner man to help me because change has got to come. I've been broken down too long, but now, Father, you're the only one that can build me up. Here it is. 
Zerubbabel. You understand what was going on there? <laughs> he was called to build a new foundation, and it's the second time building it up. And once he began to build it up, the next thing you know, in building up, God commissioned him to do it. Now, what is it when you're commissioned to do something and you got to take nothing to do it with? You know what I'm talking about. My God, when you got to take a little bit of nothing to make everything happen because God commissioned you to do it, you tell God, listen, if you're the only one that can do this because I can't do it, I tried it on my own. God, I'm giving up. And people say, you can't do it. I said, no, I can't do it. Don't want to do it. But God said, you're going to do it. I said, but God, how am I going to do it? He said, you've got to go and humble yourself under my mighty hand every day and trust me that I'm going to make a way for you. And I told God, okay, I'll trust you all the way till the end. But God, I find myself weary, wounded, and sometimes I get frail. That don't happen to y'all. Y'all too cool to let that happen to you. And you will never acknowledge it in a million years. But sometimes you want to give up. Sometimes you want to throw in the towel. I threw in the towel. I mean, literally threw a towel. I'm going to throw this towel at you, okay? I want you to catch it, right? Okay, catch. Okay, that's a good catch. Good catch. Now throw it back at me. Now don't hit me. Throw it back at me. <laughs> don't hit me. <laughs> Y'all know what I was trying to do. <laughs> you did good. The whole key is, that's God. God, is, you throw it at him, you throw it back, and you got to catch it. That's what God do. He's letting you know that, uh-uh, it ain't that easy. You got to go through everything I went through. And when you think about what Christ went through, he gave his life. Digging a foundation, do you know that's the hardest thing about a church? Is digging the foundation. I've had seven to eight church splits. And I had to go back and redig the foundation again. And every time I come back to dig the church split, then God will send me somebody. And guess what he sends me? He don't send me a lamby poo. He send me a goat. He ain't saying nothing about that. Now this goat, every time you talk to this goat, it bucks. That goat will kick. And you say, look, why don't you just go down the street, around the corner, up the block? I've sent the goat out. Guess what? It come back. Now, I don't mind the lamb coming back, but the goat. And when the goat come back, now you got more problems than you ever thought you had. Because the moment you build, they tear up. I said, God, what am I going to do? He said, didn't I tell you? Let the wheat and the tares grow together. When I come, I'll take care of it. Well, why don't you hurry up and come? Because I want you to come right now and take care of this. And then God showed you another side of you. Y'all ain't talking to me. You're supposed to be the shepherd. And you're beating the sheep. And you're running them out to church. You're trying to get them in the church. You're running them out to church. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> it's a spirit behind everything that you do. And the spirit you've got to do is humble yourself. And say, Father, I don't know how to do this. But you do. Why would this person love me and disobey me at the same time? He said, because they did it to me. Because whatever they did to me, they're going to do the same thing to you. Now you got to realize it's no longer you. It's coming back up to what this is all about. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. See, I can't do it, but God can. God just wants me to do just what he said in Proverbs, I think it's chapter 3, verse 5. He says, in all thy ways to do what? And he will direct thy path. And then Psalms 119, 105 said, the word of God shall be a light unto thy path. And what? A lamp unto thy feet. You got to be led by the spirit of the most high God. And St. John chapter 6 and verse 63 says what? It is the spirit that what? Quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. He said, the words I speak unto you, their spirit and what? 
their life. God's word began to be spoken to you. And when it's spoken to you, then here comes life. But you can't bring life on yourself until God speaks to you. And he's going to speak to you with that still, small. How many of y'all know what that is? When God go to talking to you, and you know God is talking to you, the devil going to go to talking at the same time. Y'all ain't got that problem. Y'all are so cool, that devil don't even bother you. <laughs> Amen. But he talks to me. And the enemy had taken me through so many changes, I'm ashamed to even talk about it. Because after God took me through it, he showed me, not by power, no, by might, but by my spirit. And when I got back to the place, it was the spirit of God. Then I understood the calling of God that he placed as a mantle and a mandate on my life. I'm just now at this age, getting to the place where I can hear the voice of God clearly. It took a long time for me to get to this place. A long time. And the reason why it took so long was because of my rebelliousness. But when I got to that place, I knew when the bus was coming. And I knew how to catch it. Amen. And I had my transfers for the next bus that was coming. And it's obvious when you catching the right bus in the spirit of God, you won't miss him. You'll miss them. Amen. Now, it's obvious that people are put in place and you're going to meet some people that's on assignment because when you're doing what God told you to do, this is your assignment. But once God puts some people in your life and when the spirit of God come on you in the right assignment, God's going to show you how to handle that situation. And if you built up in the spirit, I'm talking about if you built up in the spirit, I'm talking about if you built up into the spirit, you're going to see God move like you ain't never seen him move before. I found out if Enoch walked with God and he was translated that he should not see death and God translated him, that means God changed him. And when God is getting ready to change you, you're going to have to go through some changes to get changed. Because basically you realize when you're in the right dressing room, everything fits. Can I get a witness here? Now look at the person next to you. Is everything fitting? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now you're all right. Amen. Because I realized that at points when I started going through changes, I started asking God why. He said, why not? Because people look at you and expect you to go through something. And sometimes, I, I like it when married couple come into church. You know, it's a funny thing with them. When they just got out of the car and they're having a hard time and they, they're not blending like they would normally blend. And you can always tell something wrong when they look at each other. But they say, hey, hey, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I get you in at home. Uh, We're going to have a talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, sugar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Now, you know you can make go through some changes. Now, you're in church trying to praise God and get to the holies of holies. You can't, you can't even reach the cloud. <laughs> now, I remember being in the world. These old crazy songs they would sing. Cloud nine. You can be what you want to be. You ain't got no responsibility. Now, I begin to say, now, wait a minute, God. I got some responsibility, but I'm not on cloud nine. I'm in church. And I'm around church people. And those are the ones that can take you through something. Not by power. No, by might. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah to God. And I love it. I love it because some days I have to check my breath. <sighs> Okay, I got it. Amen. I'm all right. So when I go to praying for folk, I won't knock them out with my breath. But I'll knock them out with Jesus. You can clap your hands, girl. Go ahead. You're doing it right. Amen. Hallelujah. You know how it is in the breath reach all the way down there? You know, hey, I don't want to go up there because we lay hands up. I'm going to fall out on purpose. I learned to laugh about everything <laughs> because God has made it so good now. And so now I have joy when I think about what he really done for me. I got real joy. Amen. 
Some of the things that God carries us through is for our purpose. And God want to make us better than what we are. And sometimes it gets difficult. It gets hard. And don't tell me it don't get hard. It do get hard. And sometimes you often wonder, why is this happening to me? And I come back and say, why not? Amen. Because some trials and tests and tribulations and storms in every one of our lives are put there to make us. Don't forget Romans 8, 28. We just sung the song. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. But it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh. And that's the part that I have to decrease that he might increase. I got to die in order for him to live. And I told God, listen, I'm willing. He said, well, if you be willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. And I'm willing to die. I'm willing to let him live. I'm willing to give myself as a sacrifice to God. Is it easy? No, it's not because I'm always thinking about me. God said, get off of you and get on me because once you get to God, it's no place like being home. Come on and give him praise, somebody. 30 years. Come on now. 30 years. Most pastors don't last five. We come up thinking we're some great wonder. And we want everybody to know we're anointed. When you walk in my presence, you're going to fall out. I told God, uh uh, I don't want that. You take care of business. Because if I have to come into the presence of people and something happens, I'm going to blame you for doing it. I try to get out of the way of the Lord because I want Him to get the glory. So when you're young in ministry, you're young in heart, really, is what it is. Your spirit goes from one challenge to the next, and all of a sudden, you're all that. Yeah, you're all that. Uh huh. Next thing you know, you get knocked on the floor, and you ain't nothing. Because God showed you you, and he shows you the real you. I love it when we take communion. It says, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. There's times in my life where I just stop, look, and listen, and examine. And when I begin to examine me, it gets difficult because I see things that I just don't like about me. You ever seen something you didn't like about you? Oh, yeah, I seen it. I seen some things I just didn't like. When I was a kid, I told y'all what they called me when I was a kid. And I thought everybody called me the words that was right for them. And the first word they called me, because kids are cruel, they're mean, turned around and called me a spoon. I went and looked in the, is my head shaped like a spoon? Then they called me a gorilla. I went and looked in the mirror, do I look like a gorilla? And I looked at a gorilla and I looked at me. I almost believed what they said. And I had to tell myself, no, no, you're not a gorilla. You're not a spoon. They're trying to label you. And you don't let people label you and call you all kinds of names. Now, if that wasn't cruel enough, I learned right then and there to make up my mind that I wasn't going to receive another saying, a statement about what somebody else was saying. And when I got saved, oh, help me, Jesus. I am a child of God. I've been bought with a price. I've been bought with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Now, we all just got to just cross over and say, now we are the sons of God. We have changed. We're in a place that's much better than we were when we were in darkness. And oftentimes, you'll find your old nature trying to drag you back into darkness. You say, no, you're going back towards that light. God called you. And this ministry, well, ain't nobody coming through. Oh, they here. The angels are sitting up in their biggest day. Took up every place you can't even stand because they're in the room. And the problem is this. We hardly believe that God can do anything. But, God, I hope you do it. I wish you'd do it. Maybe you might do it. I'm believing you, God, to do it. Please, Jesus, help me. I want to believe you, God. Now, wait a minute. What does it say? What does it say? Is that Mark eleven twenty four? Mark eleven twenty four. I ain't going to tell you what it say. Get it for yourself. Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24. 
Mark eleven twenty four. See, we get too used to let people, you know, they ain't gonna let them do that to me. They got to get this for themselves. You know why? Because if they get it for themselves, they're gonna run with this. Y'all got what Mark eleven twenty four says? What does it say? Therefore I say what? Who is he talking to? Somebody say me. Read. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, wait a minute. I believe that I got a jet plane. I believe it. Y'all ain't celebrating with me. You are, now, now, come on. Come on now. Now, the airport is right over here. I'll take you over there and show you my plane. Now, if I showed you my plane, then I, my plane is ready to take off, and I want you to go with me. Yes. I ain't going to let you on board. <laughs> you know why? Because you don't believe. To ride my plane, you got to have what? Faith. You got to have faith. And if you can believe whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, how many of y'all got some desire? All right, now you got some desire. You're waving your hand. Glory to God. Some of y'all ain't got nothing. You ain't waving nothing around here. You know you need a car. You know you need some gas. You know you need this, that, and the other, the nine. <laughs> What's the thing you desire when you pray? He says what? Believe. Believe. That you receive them and you show sure what? Now wait. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to try to help you all out real quick. I didn't come to take up all the night, and the night take me over, because I got to go back and do a broadcast at 3.30 in the morning to 5. So here it is, and I'm going to share it with you. I've been believing God for many, many years, and people say, how do all, do all these big things happen to you? Because I believe big. I believe God is a great, big God. And something is about to happen to me now that's bigger than I've ever, ever known. And I told God, okay. I believe. Now, I'm believing. Now, everything would happen to you that would make you almost be crazy. Fixed up my church. Basement flooded out. Crunk Jim moved. That's all right. They moved. But the water came over the door in the basement. Now, here I'm saying, okay, I got insurance. I go to the insurance company and say, well, you don't have flood insurance. I say, wait a minute. What am I paying $2,400 a month for? Every month, year round, and I ain't got flood insurance? Well, this is not a flood state. Go hear that? So you're paying. Now I'm upset. You know, I almost cussed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still saved. <laughs> but I found out they got loopholes too. And now I'm going through their little loopholes. And they're going to have to pay. Oh, yeah. They got to pay. I start believing, and I got one scripture, and I think that's in Colossians chapter 2. Is that it? Colossians 2, 14. And I want you all to write this one down. Take it with you in any business deal and chew on this. Is that 14 and 15? Which one is it? Yeah, 14 and 15, chapter 2, or chapter 3. Chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. I want you all to take this before you make a business deal. Pray over this scripture here. And then after you pray over it, put it to the deal. Uh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now, we're going to read that for a reason because I want you to understand this business deal. And this works every time. It does not fail. My credit went up. Everything started climbing up. I got had good credit. And all of a sudden, I wanted a Tesla. Went out to get it. They ran. Every time I talked to them, they ran my credit from almost an 800 score all the way down to six. I didn't realize when I was talking to them, they was running me down. And then I didn't realize other people was running it down when I wanted something. I said, okay. 
I bind this devil up now in the name of Jesus. This scripture right here, y'all got it? Read it, Nisa. Blotting out the handwriting of what? Of ordinances that was against you, which was contrary, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumph over them in it. Now, I want you to understand something. This is a business deal. I don't care if you're looking at a mansion. Speak it. Put it right over it. Blotting out the handwriting. I don't know if y'all got that, but I, I want you to keep it. Because what God is about to take you, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And it's your just due season. And I mean that. I, before God takes the church out into eternity or raptures or the great catching away and all of that, the, the, the launching pad was when he took the children of Israel out of Egypt. They bankrupt Egypt. They literally bankrupt Egypt. They told him, y'all get out of here. And the king cursed the children of Israel. It backfired and cursed them. And their firstborn died. They wanted them gone. Now God says, I made you a promise. This is your assignment. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it seems like. I got this. Now, my next scripture is Numbers. I think that's chapter 23. 